So you've decided to stick with me and set up your very own WordPress website. Congratulations, you've made the right decision. Today, we'll be registering a domain, talking about hosting and uploading and installing WordPress on our very own host. This will probably be the scariest video in this series, but please stick around, it's not actually that bad. All right, let's get going. You've surely heard of them if you've ever listened to a podcast, hover.com. It's the place where I have all of my domains and I can definitely recommend them. Registering your domain is done in an instant and they have all the newest top level domains. So that's your .coms, .net, etc. Additionally, they also support two-factor authentication, which is a very important thing for me personally, and it should be for you too. Now, I've already registered my domain that I'm gonna be using for this video. I've actually done it a while back. So here it is, lacphotography.net. Spelling out my full name would have been a bit too long of a domain name, wouldn't it? But you could go for whatever domain ending you want. There's loads of options up there. So you could go for .design, .photo, or even .sexy. Before we move on to the next step, make sure you've got your domain ready. So get going now. I'll be waiting for you right here. A few moments later. Next up is hosting. And I definitely recommend you look at hosts in the country you're at or the country you're targeting with your website. I'm using cyan.ch as my host and I've never had a bad experience so far with them and I can definitely recommend them if you're looking to build a website in Switzerland. And to be honest with you here, I can't make any recommendations other than that. Now, the author of the theme I am using and I trust the guy because he is an excellent coder, does recommend SiteGround or Kinsta. SiteGround being the cheaper option and Kinsta being the slightly more expensive option with more features. For a beginner, what you're looking for is shared hosting. You can always upgrade further down the line. One thing you do want to make sure is that your host supports free SSL encryption. Google really doesn't like unsecured websites anymore, so the SSL is really something you should expect your host to include. You might have noticed that many hosts also support domain registration. You could do that, but I have a few reasons why I want to keep the two things separate. First is that I can more easily change host. Some hosts will more or less try and hold you hostage if you've got your domain registered with them and it will be a pain in the neck to get your website onto a different host. And the second reason, also very simple, is because my host doesn't support as many domain endings as hover.com does. Before we go on any further, make sure you have your hosting sorted out and I'll be waiting for you right here. One eternity later. Made it this far? Great! To point our domain to the right directions, we're gonna have to make some slight adjustments. For that, I'm going to log into my host and go to the domains. I'm going to add the domain I had previously registered in Hover and follow the instructions. To link the two together, all I have to do is make some adjustments in Hover to the DNS settings. Now, this might be different with the host you've chosen, so make sure you go and read up the help documents and look for the relevant sections. You might have to wait a while until that becomes active and your domain will point to the right place, but in the meantime, we can crack on with the WordPress installation. First of all, we have to download WordPress. And for that, you simply Google WordPress download, click on the first link and download the zip file. And while that's downloading, you may as well scroll down a bit and open up the five minute guide on installing WordPress. We're gonna need that during the whole process. First of all, we are going to need a new database. Most hosts will use PHP My Admin for that, but your host might slightly differ from mine, so make sure you read up on that in the help documents. First of all, I'm going to create a new database in my host backend and my host will automatically create a user and a password for that database. Now, make sure you never ever share or release that password or the user. I'm going to copy it into a notepad, so I'll have it ready for later on. We're going to have to make one slight adjustment to our database using PHP My Admin. So open that up again, select the database you've just created in the left panel. 
head over to operations, scroll down and change the collation to either UTF underscore your language or UTF 8 MB4 underscore general underscore CI. And that's our database set up. Now we have to edit our WordPress files and enter the database name and username and password we've just created. That is done using the WordPress configuration file. In the WordPress folder you've just downloaded, you can unzip it and look at the files in there and you should see a file titled wp-config-sample.php. You simply want to rename that file and remove the dash sample from it. Open up the file and I'm using Microsoft Visual Code for this. It's really a great application for doing this kind of stuff. And enter your database info. You should only have to edit the db name, uh, db user and db password. You'll also want to scroll down a bit, read the part about salts and follow the instructions. Now all that is left to do is to upload these files using FTP, that is the file transfer protocol. Somewhere in your host's backend you'll find an option for this and it should also give you the option to create a user and password. Once again make those very secure. Once you've got your user set up you can download and install a FTP application. I'm using FileZilla and can recommend it and then you simply want to enter the info from your host into FileZilla and connect. On the left hand side you'll see your local files. So from there simply navigate to the WordPress folder you've just downloaded and where your wconfig.php file is in. On the right you'll see the folders on your server. There you want to select the public HTML folder and go to the website name you've created in the host's backend. Then simply select all the files locally and drag them over onto your server. Now this might take a while so why not use this opportunity for a coffee break. And once your files are uploaded everything should be ready to go. Now as it had to be on the day I was planning this shoot uh, my server had massive problems and won't allow me to upload anything but I still managed to get there in the end. So if we now open up a web browser go to our domain slash wp dash admin we should get to the backend of WordPress. Congratulations you have just set up WordPress all on your own. That's not a mean feat if you ask me. You should now be greeted with the option to create a username and a password. Just go through all of those steps and you're done. But before we finish up I'm going to install one single plugin and it's a plugin that will password protect my site so nobody will be able to see it before it's actually done and I suggest you do the same while your site is still a work in progress. Simply select plugins from the right hand menu, click on add new and search for password protected. Install the first plugin that shows up and wait until it's done. Then click on settings and set a password. You can also set it to allow administrators and logged in users to be able to view your site without entering the password. So I'm going to enable that so I don't have to enter that password every time I want to look at the site. And there we have it. We've now successfully set up WordPress. It's running on our host and we can start making adjustments to our own website. In the next video I'll be installing my favorite theme for WordPress and I'll show you how you can customize it to your heart's desire. If you have any questions relating to this video or the WordPress installation in general let me know down in the comments. I'm open to answering anything I know. All right that's enough from me for one day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!